The Green Knight is the latest cinematic outing in the world of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table, and features a different take on a lesser knight. Director David Lowry takes on Arthurian legend in a film so bland, I fell asleep more than once. Hey everybody, I am Dragon Movie Guy, and this is my five-minute movie review for The Green Knight. Stick around to the end of the video, I'll tell you exactly how many times I fell asleep. Hey everybody, Dragon Movie Guy here with my movie review for The Green Knight. This is a five minute movie review, meaning I get you in and out in exactly five minutes. And to keep me honest, there's a counter right up here in the upper left hand corner. Let's start with the plot. Dev Patel takes on the role of Gawain, the not at all titular lead character. Gawain is callow if you're being generous, a douchebag if you're being honest, the nephew to the king, Gawain coasts through life off Arthur's royalty and shacks up with a commoner named Essel, played by Alicia Vikander. Christ is born. Christ is born indeed. The king, played by Mission Impossible Rogue Nation's villain, Sean Harris, invites Gawain to regale the court. Tell me a tale of yourself so that I might know thee. But Gawain has none to tell. Gawain's own mother magically conjures up the Green Knight for some logic that escapes me. Let one of your knights try to land a blow against me. The rules of the game are simple. Hit the Green Knight and win his axe, and in exchange, travel to the Green Knight's Green Chapel in exactly one year, and receive an equal wound. I will be there. Only one person takes up the challenge. You must seek him out. Was it not just a game? Perhaps. Most of the next year, Gawain continues his hedonistic hobbies until Arthur convinces him to go on a road trip to the Green Chapel. If you're liking this review for the Green Knight so far, please be sure to hit the like button until it turns blue. That helps out with the algorithm. Let's talk about the good. The Green Knight's relatively low $15 million budget stretches to good effort on the big screen. The costume design, cinematography, practical location shooting sets, and excellent cast all work together to produce a finished product that seems to fulfill a coherent director's vision. One year hence. <laughs> the extensive use of practical special effects and minimal use of computer-generated images and characters also helps the aesthetic and storytelling. To see more five-minute movie reviews, please be sure to hit the red subscribe button until it turns white, and be sure to hit the bell notification button. That'll let you know the very second I post any videos to this channel. Oh boy, we talked about the good. Now let's talk about the bad. The Green Knight is as brutal and exhausting a slog through the wilderness to watch as it is for Sir Gawain to journey through up on the big screen. While the cinematography and locations may seem pretty to look at, the many extended, slow 360-degree pans bring the pacing of the film to a rather painful halt. Another year nearly gone already. The slow pacing and editing on this film, combined with a rather unremarkable lead character, leaves the audience on a long walk to nowhere. Why do you stop me? We are doomed as I can. Patel has given great performances in the past, but this one lacks. All right, I promised to tell you exactly how many times I fell asleep in The Green Knight. I fell asleep three times in the first hour of this film. Yikes. As someone who loves a lot of director's cuts, extended cuts, deleted scenes, and making of videos, the fact that I'm saying that this is really, really slow should speak volumes. I can watch the four and a half hour director's cut of Dances with Wolves in one sitting and be really, really entertained. This film is half that length. While I really respect the set designers, actors, and cinematographers that worked really hard on this film, the director dropped the ball. Then he had the camera do a 360 degree pan around the ball that lasted a full minute. And then he had the camera do another 360 degree reverse pan back around the ball for another minute. By the time the pan was done, even the ball was bored. Skip this movie. I give this movie a two stars out of five. To see my five minute movie review for Space Jam 2, please be sure to click right over here. I've been Dragon Movie Guy. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.